Today, we're making a cider from bag to glass. Let's get started. All right, so when I say from a bag, I literally mean from a bag. This is from Brewer's Best, which is a company that does a lot of beer kits, brewing supplies, stuff like that. They have created a cider kit in a bag. And now this thing comes with everything, almost everything you need <laughs> to make said cider. Um, we're gonna talk about what you need for it. But in this, you have a bunch of different flavor options for ciders. So specifically today, we're making a mango and peach cider. Uh, this is not the mango peach cider kit, but we'll talk about it. This is an example one. In here is a base concentrate for your cider. Now there is a sweetener that comes with it and a flavoring that are two little other sachets or bags that are what you get your actual flavoring from. The base cider portion is not really flavored. I picked this thing up at my local brew shop. I think you can get them online as well. Um, they're a little bit expensive, but uh, we're gonna talk about that. On here has the ingredients as apple juice concentrate, glucose syrup, raspberry juice concentrate, um, malic acid, yeast nutrient, artificial sweetener, yada, yada, yada. So you have a base, like you have your cider base, but once it ferments, it loses a lot of that flavoring. So here's what you need to actually be able to use this. They don't include everything. This kit comes with about two thirds of the stuff you need. You're gonna have to get some water, so you can go and buy store-bought water, use tap water, anything like that. You also need some sugar. So it, this specifically requests that you have two pounds of, it says dextrose, which I used table sugar. So two pounds of just table sugar for this. And then a like priming sugar for bottle carbonating. Now I'm gonna show you a bottle carbonated and a kegged version today. So how do you make this? Well, first of all, when you open up the bag, I'm not gonna open this one up. Um, there's two sides to this. So one side of this has the apple juice concentrate and whatever other flavor and concentrate on this side. And then behind it is a couple other uh, little pouches of things you can pull out. So like I said, it comes with a flavoring and a sweetener. And I think that's it actually. Oh, and a yeast. You can cut this bag open. You pour your concentrate, which is the main component in here, into a bucket or a fermenter of sorts. You are going to add your sugar. Now, specifically, it's, it's recommended, and I recommend, to actually take and put a little water into a pot and heat up your sugar so that it actually will um, mix better. So I did that. I heated up some water, put my two pounds of sugar in, and then um, added that into a bucket with more water to top it up to about six gallons. And then of course I put in the base here. You can pitch the yeast once it is at room temp. Um, so this was room temp. I went ahead and pitched my yeast on top of that, closed my bucket. I did take a gravity reading. The gravity reading showed that this was setting at roughly about 1.042, which is right in the range that the actual instructions have. It does come with some instructions to help you if you've never brewed before. So it has like a checklist and stuff. I've done this a lot, so I, I didn't really use it, but the original gravity should be between 1.041 and 1.044 for this. So after we put the lid back on, it was time to let it ferment. It took about two weeks for it to ferment out. Um, we knew it was done for a couple reasons. One, the airlock activity slowed down, which is something. Um, cleared up, but also we took a gravity reading. The new gravity was 1.000, which told us it had finished fermenting. Now we are going to take and rack it into a new container with an auto siphon and tubing. So we did that. We are going to also add our flavoring and our sweetener. Both of these are non-fermentable. Um, and, and I know that just based off experience, essentially, this, the sweetener packet has instructions for if you want it to be drier, you, you use less of the sweetener packet or more if you want it to be sweeter. For the flavoring, you just throw the whole flavoring thing in. I just so happen to use all of the sweetener, all of the flavoring. When I racked into a new container, I added that flavoring, that sweetener to that main thing right there. I then went one of two ways. Actually, I went both ways, but I'll show you both of them. 
There's a bottle carbonation method and a kegged version. Let's talk about the bottle carbonation, which is something that most of you will probably end up doing. To bottle carbonate this, you are going to now take and move the, the however much liquid you have there into a different container and add priming sugar. Priming sugar is fermentable by the yeast, which there are still some yeast active in this brew. They will consume the priming sugar when you put those that uh, cider into bottles and in about two to three weeks time, it will be bottle carbonated. Now here's the trick, you have to use an appropriate amount of priming sugar. So use a priming sugar calculator, there's a link below. It will show you exactly how much to add. Priming sugar is not included in this kit, so you have to go get some yourself. You can use table sugar, dextrose, there's a whole list of things you can use there. But that's essentially what I did. I got my priming sugar, put it into there, then I mixed that up nicely, and then I went into bottles using a auto siphon and tubing and bottling wand which I have equipment below if you need that. We let those bottles set back for two weeks and we, well, about three weeks actually, and they have bottle carbonated since then. I just chilled one right here. We're gonna open it here in a second. The kegging side is very similar. We had our already sweetened and flavored beverage. We went and racked with that auto siphon and tubing into a keg and we put the lid back on and we put it into our, into my little kegerator out here and I, I basically put it on CO2. I put it at 30 PSI for about two to three days and it now is carbonated, force carbonated. It's a little quicker, a little bit nicer. I have a video about force carbonation if you're curious. So that's from the beginning of this bag, from bag to glass. We gotta go fill up a couple glasses if we're really gonna, um, See what this is like. So let's go get those sorted out. All right, we have both of them here. I've got my kegged version right here and I've got the bottle carbonated right here. Both are fully carbonated and I believe at the same level of carbonation. In your priming sugar calculator, you can calculate if you want it to be more carbonated or less. So I believe there's a, these are about the same. Let's go ahead and taste them. So in my right hand, here's the bottle carved. Let's try it. Oh yeah, definitely. It's peach forward. It's got a little bit of a, in my opinion, um, kind of like the uh, peach rings flavor to me, more of that kind of flavoring than it does have like a, a true rich peach side. The mango is nice and refreshing. Our ABV is somewhere in that five to six range, I'm fairly certain. Yeah, it's about 5.2. So it's super crushable. It's got the sweet, I mean, it's, it's sweet. Definitely um, using the full packet of sweetness made it sweet tasting. It's very crushable and very good. Um, bottle carving sometimes can, ye can yield or lead to a more yeasty character because there's yeast in that bottle. This doesn't have a lot of that and that's mostly because it was fully bottle carbonated and then cold and so a lot of the yeast have fallen to the bottom. The stuff at the bottom here might be more um, yeasty tasting, but the top of it is not. I mean that is, it's pretty dang good. Crushable, super nice, easy, easy, easy. Here's the kegged. Oh yeah, kegged, I mean, pretty much tastes the, it's very similar, I would say, noting that there is a little bit less of a yeastiness or yeasty side to this. Same sweetness, uh, mango is there, the peach is there, kind of, again, like that candy peach vibe. I mean, they're the same, they taste pretty much the exact same. Um, same process, it's just which, side you can go to. Can you bottle carbonate it? Or sorry, can you keg it? If not, then you probably have to bottle carbonate. So either way, it's very good. From bag to glass, it was roughly, if you're doing a bottle carb, it's gonna be uh, four weeks, maybe, which is a quick turnaround. The cider is easy. So if you wanna do something like this at home, you can pick these up. Um, I'll try and find some links to it, but I have something special for you. I am actually giving away this right here to one of you in the comment section. If you will leave me a comment talking about something about 
um, your brewing experience or lack thereof, and maybe it's your first time, talk about what you brewed or what you want to brew, and I will be picking a comment within the week that this video is out, and I will ship this to you, and you will be able to make yourself a raspberry and lime cider. Same process as this whole video. Um, this thing retails for a little bit more than I think it's worth. I'm seeing a couple different price points, anywhere from 53 bucks to like 38. You know, you'll say it's 45 bucks for a bag. You're getting about five to six gallons of brew, which is really not bad. That is, if you do um, 12 ounce bottles, that's about, you know, 60 bottles. So that's, a, a, I'd say a pretty good price. You do have to get the sugar. You do have to get priming sugar as well. Those are the two things you have to have. Of course, your bottles and those things, but pretty good price for what you get here. So uh, you can check that out. I think I might even try to find a link below if you wanna order online, but check out your local brew shop. And again, go ahead and leave a comment about your brewing experience or what you wanna do, because I will pick a, com a commenter to send this to. So be on the lookout for that. So this has been a cider from a bag to a glass. I think it's pretty good and I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll see you next time. Check out the channel. Check out these sweet shirts. If you are curious and you wanna help save the bees, um, I have a very fun video I'll also put down below about saving the bees and some things. So check out the link to these. All the proceeds will go to support um, a bee, a charity that educates people about beekeeping and things and helps preserve that pastime. So feel free to check that out below. If you wanna get one of these, support the channel, support bees specifically, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.